So I've gotten a lot of questions recently and I wanna make a video to talk to you guys about how to trigger reaction strikes from fish. Now this is one of my favorite subjects to talk about. It's mainly gonna be focused on sight fishing, redfish and black drum. Now I've done a couple videos on triggering reaction strikes from trout and flounder. I'll leave links to those below. But this is gonna be more about that redfish that you see tailing or that black drum that's cruising and the way that you're gonna set yourself up to trigger that strike from the moment that you cast, the way that your line is gonna lay so that it doesn't spook the fish the retrieve, even the lure that you're using, all of that matters to get the strike from the fish. So let's jump into all of these things that you need to know to get you onto some fish fast. So the first step in this whole process is setting up the interception. And this is really the baseline for triggering the strike. You need to make sure that you're getting your cast in the right spot and that you're getting that retrieval speed down. So once you've got that fish in your sights, uh, be it a redfish, black drum, doesn't matter, you need to find out exactly where that fish is gonna move. So before you actually cast, take a second to watch that fish and see exactly where it's moving and what its patterns are. Is it darting around? Is it searching for food? Is it just digging around in the sand? The typical pattern that I see from black drum is that they will find one path that they want to work as they dig around. A lot of times you don't see them shooting off to the left and right, chasing bait. They're mostly going to just be digging and they make an easy target in that aspect, but redfish are a little bit different. Most times when I see redfish, they're darting all around, they're acting a little bit more erratic, they will still follow this point A to point B type pattern. So if you see them heading down a certain angle, maybe they'll dart off to the right to kind of check an area out for a second or two, you'll usually see them move back down on that bearing. So try to differentiate those kind of quick darts to check out maybe a mullet here, pinfish here, versus the point A to point B pattern. If you can figure out which direction they're moving almost and figure out that bearing, you can kind of sift through those darty erratic movements and not cast to the wrong spot because nothing is worse than thinking a redfish is going left, casting that direction and realizing that was just one of those small erratic darts and point B is actually over to the right. So be sure to take a second or two to study your target before you cast. A lot of people, regardless of whether it's black drum or redfish, they'll willy nilly just cast as soon as they see a fish. What you really should do is take a beat, three or four seconds, just to study what that fish is doing, kind of differentiate maybe those erratic movements from the actual point A to point B pattern. That way you can set your cast up to perfectly intercept that fish. That's what it comes down to is making sure that you're gonna be able to put your lure in the right area. You can then adjust your retrieval speed as we'll talk about in a second and get it on that correct path so that it passes by the fish in the right spot and that's what's gonna get that fish to actually react to your lure. They're not gonna chase it down from a mile away and they also don't wanna be bumped in the face with it. So you gotta make sure that it crosses through that correct path and the only way you can do that is by actually watching the fish and setting up your cast to intercept them. So up next, I wanna talk about lure placement and retrieves, but first we're gonna cover the actual lures that I like to use for sight fishing. If you guys watch any of my videos, you know that whenever I take a wade to go sight fish or I'm on the trolling motor, I always have a three or three and a half inch paddle tail tied on, maybe even sometimes up to a four inch, but I try to stick in the smaller paddle tail range, something that doesn't cause too much commotion, but has a little bit of vibration. And the reason that I like paddle tails is because as you're working this lure in front of this fish, I find that something that just moves a little bit faster tends to trigger the strike. If you sit there and let something kind of sit, a lot of times it doesn't work as well. You're either gonna need to jig it or swim it a little bit faster to trigger the strike. So the paddle tail lends itself to both of those retrieves. Now I will say I prefer white paddle tails uh, for the most part just because they work in a variety of different water clarity scenarios. I've fished it in dirty brown water and I've caught a lot of fish that I can just barely see the outline of and I've fished it in gin clear water where I can see every scale that's on the fish that I'm casting at. So I know it works in a variety of different situations, but most of all, it's very easy for me, the angler, to see so that I can adjust my retrieve so that I intercept that fish at the right time. So what I mean by that is, as I cast that lure out, generally what I'm gonna try to do is cast it away from the direction that the fish is moving so that the line does not lay on that fish's back. Ideally, what you wanna do if the fish is moving from right to left is cast a little bit to the left so that that line lays down to the side of the fish. And as you retrieve that lure, you're going to need to make adjustments to the speed that you're doing it at. Again, the paddle tails are nice because that just factors into the natural action of the lure. And then you can speed it up or slow it down so that it passes within six inches to a foot of that fish's face. With black drum, you might need to get a little bit closer. I find redfish do like that six to kind of uh, 12 inches 
from their nose. Uh, that's kind of the dinner plate for them. Black drum, I find, need it a little bit closer, and sometimes you can even slow it down in front of a black drum and kind of almost hop it. Most times that'll trigger them to start following it. One or two twitches will get them to actually strike. With redfish, I very rarely actually ever have to stop. Usually I can roll it straight past them and take a half second pause between my retrieves. So I'm rolling at a pretty constant speed, and then that just quick half second before I pick it up again, that is all those redfish need to turn around and pounce on it. So again, big goal here. It's important you can see your lure because you need to get it far enough away from the fish and adjust that retrieve so that you know the splash doesn't scare them and that lure is going to pass in front of their nose in that dinner plate range, six to 12 inches in front of them for redfish, about six inches, maybe even a little bit less for those black drum that needed a little bit closer as they're digging around in that mud. But those are the two big differentiations. Black drum kind of need it a little bit closer in front of their face. Uh, I usually mix in a couple pops uh, and pauses to get them to actually strike with the red fish. It's a little bit easier just to roll it past them, maybe give a half second pause, and usually they'll chase it down and absolutely clobber it. And it's really easy to get these fish to strike. But again, setting up the proper cast, making sure that you adjust that retrieve so that it rolls right in front of the dinner plate and making sure that you adjust exactly what you're doing based on the species is going to be the ticket to helping you guys catch a lot more fish and trigger more reaction strikes. So again, I've covered a lot in this video. I'm sure you guys might have some questions. Please leave them in the comment section below. I'm more than happy to answer anything you guys have. And if you enjoyed this tip, you've gotten this far, I highly recommend you join the Insider Club because we have got a ton of great information. All the clips that you guys have seen have come from my recent Insider reports. A lot of the stuff I got questions on in the Insider Club, and I've answered a lot of it there for insiders, but I wanted to make this video for you guys to help out. And if you want to see more awesome tips and information like this, please join us in the Insider Club. I promise you won't be disappointed. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know we're the number one online fishing club out there. We actually guarantee we're gonna help you catch more fish, save time and money on tackle, and help you make friends fast, or it's free. So thanks again so much for watching, and we're hoping to see you in the Insider Club soon.